oldest pastime in crypto, the alt layer one trade. It never dies. New layer one blockchains come online every single year, every single bull market. Uh, we have been producing new blockchains in the crypto sp space ever since Litecoin and Dogecoin. Uh, these new blockchains, they all attempt to gain some sort of adoption via technological innovation, charismatic leaders, really good memes. Uh, it has been the narrative that has high come transactions per second. Yeah, right? high, that, that's a great <laughs> line. Great, yeah, the very high cheap. Yes, train. Yeah, we're we're the the chain for mainstream consumer adoption. That's a very hot line that many many have leveraged. Uh, something we've seen like, oh, we're the real world asset chain. We'll talk about that narrative in a second. Um, they're all narratives. Um, uh, understanding how each one captures attention and why others win is definitely like a dark art. It's definitely like um, uh, there's no real rhyme or reason to it. Some projects just um, figure it out better than others. Um, but just b overall big e e emphasis on like this has always been a narrative of crypto. Every single bull market, there is a new type, new flavor of alt layer ones. Uh, right now, this cycle seems to be the meta of the parallelized virtual machine layer one. This was set by the success of Solana from last cycle. Uh, and so now there are a bunch of copycat parallelized virtual machine layer ones coming online. Uh, Sui, Say, Aptos, Monad, uh, and then also the honorable mention, uh, the Eclipse layer two on Ethereum, also a parallelized virtual machine on uh, Ethereum as a layer two. Um, but this will also be in addition to the many other types of layer ones that come on scene. Ever since Bitcoin came about and we made blockchains, people are like, oh, I can make a blockchain. Um, also, I'm going to make a blockchain that's going to be worth a billion dollars. Uh, and so it's a speculative fund venture for layer one founders. It's a speculative venture for venture capitalists who will fund these things. And it's even a very favorite pastime for retail speculation. Um, it's very, yeah, it's a speculation through and through and through. Uh, every once in a while, one works, and that's what keeps the game going. In all these things, you got to be very careful about uh, token lockups, of course. So yes. um, the, all of these chains, this this uh, follows with many of the infrastructure investments we were just talking about as well. Uh, they uh, raised a whole bunch of money from VCs, and the VCs are looking for an exit at some point in time, right? And so retail can be that exit for them. And so you have to be very careful about tokens when they're unlocking and um mm -hmm. you know the the net selling pressure in some of these assets i i do agree with you david on the alternative layer ones like the big theme this year it seems to me and for the next uh, two years is going to be parallelized uh alternative layer one chains so mm -hmm. monad uh, has is probably the first project that's going to come online that will actually have a parallelized evm so so far the big virtual machine in town has been um, Solana and the SVM. Well, Monad is doing that with the EVM. So if you are deployed like via the EVM, it can take advantage of some of the, the Ethereum virtual machine network effect. And Sui is uh, a parallelized VM that is based on the, the Move VM. So that's another flavor of it. And I think th those are the projects that are going to catch a bit. There, there's also this blending though, David, we're, we're talking about this uh, in terms of alternative layer ones, just because that's a category. So they are not using Ethereum, they are bootstrapping their own validators, right? And that's what makes it an alternative layer one. But there's this blending because they're all chains at the end of the day, right? And so what is the difference between these alternative layer ones and the layer twos that we were talking about? Well, the only difference is, um, the layer twos settle on top of Ethereum, where, whereas the, the layer ones are kind of bootstrapping their own validator set on their own, and, and they're kind of like sell, uh, settling on kind of their, their own base layer. Um, do, do you see any distinction there? Or it's like, why is alternative layer ones, why are they a separate narrative? Why aren't they all just chains? For some reason, as a layer one, the market valuation of your token just gets the layer one premium. Um, a layer two, in my opinion, I think in our opinion, has much stronger fundamentals because as a layer two, they simply don't have to pay for their own network security. That's what a layer two is. They leverage Ethereum for security and Ethereum secures all of its own layer twos. But then if you're a layer two, you don't necessarily have the, the same market comparable valuation of like the Solana or Ethereum itself or even Bitcoin itself. So there's always just this incentive pull towards being a layer one because people perceive layer ones to be more valuable, even though being a layer one is harder and you're less more, you're more likely to fail. 
uh, in the short term, you can attract a higher market cap. So it's kind um, of a narrative trade because you can comp against trade. something like Ethereum. So if Ethereum right. is worth four hundred billion dollars, right? Well, we then have I should be at, le at least four billion dollars. Exactly, because we're gonna capture just X percent of Ethereum, mm -hmm. and we're we're not a layer two. We're not settling on Ethereum. Uh, right. We are an alternative to Ethereum. That's why yeah. this class uh, has often been called in the past uh, the Ethereum killer type class right. because at, at class. some layer they 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 have to go against in order to get the valuation that they kind of want, mm -hmm. they have to go against um, King Ethereum in this right. in this narrative category and knock them out. Uh, and some some have actually had some uh, reasonable traction doing this, like uh, mm -hmm. Solana, I would say. Solana extended the alt layer one trade by like another 10 years. <laughs> Bought it some time. <laughs> because and it worked. I, it worked. I mean, I've also had a, a thesis, I don't know how this will play out, but over time, some of these will switch categories. You might see yeah. a layer two, like transform, become an alternative layer one, and you might see uh, alternative layer ones become layer twos. In fact, mm -hmm. we have seen many like former class of, of 2021 alternative layer ones now actually migrate and become mm -hmm. layer twos like uh, cello network is is one of these mm -hmm. they were going off on their own and now they're in ethereum uh, layer two also near has become much more kind of uh, ethereum aligned it's not a full layer two i would say but it's providing it's it's pivoted into like da becoming a, for ethereum, ethereum module, layer twos yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly so very very interesting. Do do you have any takes? Is is basically your assessment that uh, look for parallelized alternative layer ones in this in this category? Do you, are well, there this any is the category that has definitely uh, captured attention now, uh, because like I said, the, the Solana is set in stone the parallelized virtual machine meta, um, and so now there are a bunch of like Solana copycats trying to um, wedge themselves between Solana and Ethereum. Uh, and so this is why both Say and Monad are doing parallelized EVM, not the Solana virtual machine, but the Ethereum virtual machine, which has the massive developer ecosystem. I will say the layer one trade can be dangerous because you might fall into the trap of buying into a VC ghost chain. Uh, and so you do not want to buy the tokens of some sort of like VC hyped chain that doesn't have any users and just has fake, uh, and let's, fake let's hype say, and excitement from the uh, venture capital community. That's the base case. That's generally that's, that's how where, it plays that's out. That's where it starts. It, expect Capturing that. <laughs> a community and building a community is like the next hardest thing for an alt layer one to actually gain like real users and real adoption. Uh, and so like the thing is you can become a multi-billion dollar VC ghost chain. And what I mean by ghost chain is that like it's a ghost town, like there's no one there, there's no one using it, there's no GDP there. Uh, but you can, for some reason in crypto, especially in bull markets, you can still like command like a five, $10 billion market cap, even though no one's using your shit. Uh, and so generally those investments don't do very well in bear markets. I mean, nothing really does very well in bear markets, but those investments tend to go to zero in bear markets. Whereas the ones with actual community adoption and actual like economic vitality on the chain actually tend to stick around. Yeah, I'll also say there's, there's a danger here in this uh, parallelized virtual machine category is, is definitely something that layer twos are pursuing as well. And why mm -hmm. parallelized uh, virtual machines? It's because you can max out transactions per second right. on these things. Bandwidth, and so bandwidth, bandwidth, yeah. layer twos will also compete against this category in the uh, of alternative layer ones. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.